All day long, my bullshit detector was going off. I was a trial user for Trust Me, a new startup specializing in devices that monitored the nuances of a person's speech. You'd plug it into your ear like a hipster hearing aid, and it would give you a little beep whenever it picked up a suspicious change in your interlocutor's baseline. The problem was that an office is not a hospitable place to trial a bullshit detector. By the end of the day, my ears were ringing, and I shuffled in exhaustion towards the lift and freedom. I got in the lift, and in came Kyle. Please don't open your mouth, I thought. Just don't. Then I realized that he was also sporting one of these devices. These are terrible, aren't they, he said. He looked a little gray in the face. What happened to you, I asked. Sex with my girlfriend, he said. Back home, I realized that I didn't really need a device when a good old gut feeling did me just fine. It was certainly interesting, though, to have the hunches, one so often ignored, confirmed by a hearing aid. I unhooked the device and placed it on the table. It sat there like a coiled snake. It'll never take off, I thought. It went viral right after launch. Everyone had to have one. Not that you could tell. The latest model was so discreet that you, that you wouldn't always know if someone was wearing it. From anxious parents checking out their babysitter's background to cautious probing mother-in-laws, little beeps were going off in a multitude of ears every day. There was speculation that sooner or later, the devices would be allowed in a court of law, and that police investigations were already beginning to make use of them. A new style of political communication emerged. Monosyllabic answers were in vogue, and for the first time, flat silences and clipped answers were becoming a real issue in live broadcasts. The era of grandiose posturing and flippant chatter seemed to be over. Worried that I would be at a disadvantage without one, I ended up buying into it again. But it was like being sucked into a whirlpool of escalating social anxiety. The truth simply didn't cut it in each and every situation. Left and right, couples were breaking up. Old people were shaking walking sticks at each other, and redundancies were mushrooming. Meanwhile, there was a political movement growing whose leader set off all our bullshit detectors. Young and full of irrepressible energy, Rufus Quibblestone bounced from scandal to scandal, his followers multiplying on all of the social media channels. It must have given people a headache watching him on the telly with their detector beeping in their ear all the time. I had to just take it out whenever he appeared on the news. Come to think of it, I couldn't imagine what it would be like at his rallies, just waves of irritated people clenching their eyes shut, dealing with their self-inflicted migraines. How did they do it? And how could he persist when he knew he was lying? Soon enough came the answer, and my biggest shock so far. The cameras caught Quibblestone, in a blistering rant against the status quo. The elites, who were engaged even in the falsifying of truth, real truth, the sunlit and haloed his platinum hair. His blue eyes blazed in his childlike face. He waved a bullshit detector in the air, and he said, this is the epitome of false truth, propagated by the invested elite. And he threw it down from the stage and it bounced on the ground and broke. And the platter-eyed crowd erupted into wild applause and jubilant cheering, and they threw down their own devices and trampled them into the dirt. Spring arrived, and I began suffering from moments of acute disorientation. Sometimes it was as, as if I was witnessing the world shattering and being pieced together again, in a willfully incorrect arrangement that distorted what was once so familiar, rendering it no longer recognizable. From my smaller and colder apartment, I docked more points off my citizen score 
by logging onto a liberal news site and watching the latest interview with the CEO of Trust Me, a young ex-physicist, ex-Googler wonder kid, Dr. Julia Kowalski. She had a polite and calm exterior and a gentle way of talking. Only her earnest, glittering eyes revealed a soul aflame. Trust Me was swamped in scandal again. And while the company assisted that their bullshit detector had undergone rigorous testing and was 99.9% .9 accurate, Quibblestone was taking time out from his new PM duties to publicly decry Dr. Kowalski a phony. Certainly consumers had turned against bullshit detectors because these days they were always going off all the time. There was no rest from the device's endless nudging. Responding to the interviewer's questions, Dr. Kowalski said, The issue is not the quality of our product, it's that consumers' demands are changing. Afterwards, I went out to pick up milk and bumped into my old colleague Kyle on Upper Street. We both drew breath in surprise at each other's changed appearance. His cheeks were bursting with dewy vitality his mouth curved upwards in a perpetual smile. He wasn't walking along Upper Street. He was practically skipping. Christ, he said, casting a concerned eye over my deflated form. You could do with a bit of happy aid. What the hell is that? He tapped his ear and said, it filters what you hear based on your worldview. It basically helps you take back control. That sounds shit, I said. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? He said. He clapped my shoulder. Well, cheerio, he said, and skipped off. As soon as I got home, I signed up for Happy Aid. <laughs>